Welcome to the Your Message Received podcast. And now, taking your message to the finish line, your host, John Duffin. Well, hey there, folks. This is John Duffin here with Duffin Media, and welcome back to another episode of Your Message Received. Your Message Received is the home, the platform to help you find your best, most authentic, most true business voice. Hell, you'll find your best true voice. Get what you want, find what you need, improve your results, make billions of dollars. Okay, we, we're not guaranteeing that last one. We're still working on that. But the other ones we feel good about. And I'm thrilled that you're back for this next episode. Keep liking, sharing, finding us now on the Odyssey music platform just occurring. iHeartMedia, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and a bunch of other places. And also on YouTube, too. We make it easier for you, right, to find the information. And best of all, what we're doing is we bring people on that can get us to our highest levels of authenticity. Because for me, the whole thing here is I never want to have to go it alone. I, I don't have all the answers. And the truth is the only reason I get to go further is because I get to align with way cool people. And there's no exception to that rule today. I get to introduce to you Dr. Seema Bonnie, And I get to know Dr. Bonnie for personal as well as professional reasons. Dr. Bonnie is a long time, 21 plus years in the medical field, an expert in a lot of things, including functional wellness, lifelong health and vitality. Uh, and if you ask Dr. Bonnie, she may tell you that lifelong health and vitality is our birthright. And I want to find out more about it. Dr. Bonnie, welcome to the show. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. I'm thrilled to have you. So folks, uh, a little bit of transparency and, and not even a disclaimer. Dr. Bonnie, in addition to being an expert, in addition to have done a lot of television and video content, also happens to be my doctor too, my integrative wellness, functional wellness doc. And so I know some things firsthand that I'm delighted in. I'll be excited when Dr. Bonnie gets to share and it won't be my blood work, I promise you. We, <laughs> that just sounds awful. Um, but for me, what I wanted to be able to focus on in regards to the timeline is this. So functional wellness, integrative medicine, and that sort of thing. How would you define those terms in regards to what it actually is? So these were terms that I didn't learn when I went to medical school at Jefferson. Mm -hmm. So we learn, you know, as, as physicians, our goal is to basically identify disease processes and then treat them. Generally, as MDs, we're either giving up a medication or we're doing surgery, one or the other, really. Mm -hmm. um, we don't really, I mean, to tell, you, to tell you the truth, full disclosure, we had zero minutes of nutritional guidance. There were no prerequisites to to know how to eat, to know what sort of macro and micronutrients you do need. We did do biochemistry for half a year, which I think most medical schools do, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, which it's perplexing because I know people have been to the same medical school who say things like vitamins are stupid. And I'm like, well, you took that same biochemistry class. And so <laughs> all those different micronutrients are important for all these different, you know, things that happen in this machine that we call our body. And it's like taking out a piece of your car and saying it's not working right, you know, and then saying, well, let's just give it another piece, you know, or some, some, I don't know, change the oil when really you got to stop and, and look to see what's happening, what's missing, what needs to happen. So it's really a different approach to medicine, but it's still traditional. I should say we still utilize what I think should be traditional medicine. It's just a really deep dive into looking to see what's happening inside the body and the whole approach is to prevent and to fix things that are happening from a root cause versus just throwing some medications at it. And, you know, it's complicated, right? So there's work to be done both by the physician as well as by patients. I mean, patients like you are such a pleasure to work with. Mm -hmm. You know, you work hard, you're conscientious mm -hmm. about what you should be doing. You're careful about supplements and, you know, you know, exercise and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Those are things that we touch base about every time because they have to be discussed because that is, is how, you know, inflammation either happens or doesn't happen mm -hmm. in your body. You know, so it's really just a really preventative approach. 
Yep, I, I love that. And I think about like timelines as well. I I think I remember when these terms and this sort of scientific technology made sense to me, or at least to ask questions. I was probably in my 40s. I'm I'm over 60 right now. And um, yeah, I know you can't believe it. I Stop. Um, <laughs> but what I was going to say, it was def well into my 40s. It may have been my early 50s. It as I think about probably early 50s, right? So you went to the doctor. That's what I knew, right? That, and I'll just speak for me. You went to the doctor. You gave the list of, are you feeling okay? Yeah, but, or yeah, I am, or whatever the answer was. Check, check, check. Um, well, the doctor said I should take this. I'm going to give it like a direct ex Oh, no, forgive me. I'll, I'll digress. I want to ask you something first. I... Before that, even with your own timeline, in terms of your own credentials, in addition to being in the accelerated program at Jefferson, in, you know, in Philadelphia, in conjunction with Penn State University, you did an extended program in New York in emergency medicine. What was that like? So I went into... Um my career of emergency medicine. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you how many times I must have said this because it's so clear in my mind. Mm -hmm. I would tell anybody who would listen how I wanted to save lives, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So like, I couldn't think of anything more, you know, I don't know, more cool, more like right. something that right. can make more of a change in somebody's life than like something mm -hmm. like emergency medicine. The old um, show ER. Oh, <laughs> it's like, oh my God, I ER, right? Um, I think it was all time popular at that at the years that I applied because it was like mm -hmm. the, the most popular residency. Um, in fact, I hear still surprisingly 23 years after I applied that it's still actually pretty, pretty popular for reasons that kind of perplex me, I think. Um, but the truth is, when you actually get into it, you know, it's it's mostly chronic care. And maybe in, in, in New York City, where at level one trauma centers, it was a little bit more exciting. But ERs in general, everywhere else are like gut issues and chest pain and blood sugars that are too high and blood pressures that are too high and other hormonal type symptoms, but stuff that's really very chronic in nature. So all these years I did emergency medicine, I thought to myself, John, I thought these guys are not going to see their doctors because if they were going to their doctors, it would not be here for things like constipation, because that is mm -hmm. definitely not an ER issue or shouldn't mm -hmm. be, right? And so- I'm thinking I'm, car crash or medevac, yeah. and you're talking about constipation, yikes. Right. Uh, okay. A lot, a lot of this, so, so there's like the whole chronic stuff that I just assume people weren't following up, you know, and then I, over time I would say, well, do you see, did you see your doctor? Yeah, I see my doctor and they just told me to go to the ER, or I've seen my doctor and they don't do anything or whatever it is, you know? And I think something like gut issues is a, is a perfect perfect example of something you really need to get deeper. You need to look at tests that are not the typical tests that we think about when we think of the GI. Like, we're not talking about colonoscopy, we're talking about functional tests that tell us what the gut microbiome is doing. All those, you know, all that gut bacteria that basically, you know, impacts mood, impacts weight, impacts sleep, impacts all kinds of different things. So um, I digress, but in the ER, you know, seeing a lot of chronic things. And then I also realized that the time that you're coding somebody and they live, like initially it started seeming like, yes, we got them. That's it's just not like over time, I, I, I felt like I would get more satisfaction over helping mm -hmm. people way before they ever get to a point where they're being coded in the ER. You know, and while that's right. necessary, it's not a good prognostic indicator, mm -mm. you know, like this isn't somewhere you want to be or anybody would want to be. So I start a lot earlier, you know, than somebody who gets this. I want to prevent you from ever going to the ER and having that sort of situation happen. So it's funny. It's not. Well, it's the topic's not funny, but I'm going to say it, it, it's interesting. Talk about like waiting until the last possible moment you know, to get something addressed, them, not you, um, that it's like, it, it's, but what I didn't take into account was the primary docs funneling people to the ER, but I know you're, I, I know you're right. I know you're right. And that absolutely happened to me. Um, you know, and, and it's like, so my thoughts are, it, it's like all along, it's like, I remember 
before I met you, and you and I had this conversation, right? And before I met you, I my mindset used to be like, well, the doctor said. So I'm of an age where it was like, if they told you, well, that's that. The policeman said, the priest said, the doctor said. So anything they said was not only believed, it was followed through because they said, well, then I better go to the ER. I better take the medication. I'll, I'll use me as an example. So I've had restless leg syndrome for it, more than two decades. Um, it's probably approaching 25 years now. And I could still remember. So where this started for me, I was trying to think where it was. Here's where it started for myself was selfishly, I'm bringing this up. I was given more, I'm going to say, not progressive medication, more like lethal, potentially lethal and addictive medication to, if this isn't work, well, then we just up the ante. Well, then we'll just, if that's not, we'll, we'll just go further. And I was taking, I remember I was taking clonopin, um at one point. And I remember saying to the doc, first time I think I ever questioned, first time, uh, I, I, I'm waking up feeling stupid. I was no expert. That was the, the exact tech term. I'm waking up feeling stupid and nothing's changed. Oh, okay. And they went another layer higher. And then I remember taking that and thinking, ooh, ooh. and that's when I started to question things. For you, my question is, when did you, when was it about when you questioned what was going on and what made you make the change to go from, we'll say last stage to first stage? So interesting you say that. And I think mm -hmm. that there's nothing more powerful than when something happens to you and you say, mm -hmm. you know, versus like hearing about it. So for me, it was, you know, I had this pretty crazy medical thing happen out of nowhere where I had mm -hmm. zero medical history of anything. And then all of a sudden had these like massive blood clots in my lungs, right? Which is mm -hmm. a pretty, I mean, I've seen people like die in the ER of that not once, but a few times. So mm -hmm. pretty lethal condition. It's probably one of the most dangerous things that can happen to somebody. Wow. Um, can also like cause strokes and all kinds of things like that. Mm -hmm. When the hematologist told me that there's nothing could, that could be done to prevent that from happening again, that if and when it happened again, they would just put me in a blood thinner for life was the point for me that I said, no, like, mm -hmm. and I didn't say that to her, but I think in my own, I, mm -hmm. that's not, that's not an acceptable reason mm -hmm. right first of all we don't know why this happened which it makes makes no sense and secondly there's got to be a way to prevent something like this versus well like medicine is very reactive if it happens to you then we'll go ahead and do xyz you know and the truth is you're much better off not having blood clots not having cancer not having a heart attack not having a stroke because coming back from those things now you have potential deficits right um so when she said that, I said, that just wasn't an explanation. And that's what mm -hmm. made me actually get into functional wellness and try to figure out how the heck did this happen to me? I'm a really healthy person, you know, like, yeah. this isn't, no history of anything. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it became pretty clear to me and it started with a lot of lifestyle stuff and a lot of it related mm -hmm. to my career where I started working night shifts. Mm -hmm. Guess what? When you sleep two hours a day try and get somebody to eat healthy and exercise, it becomes very hard, which a lot of times when I see patients who are like, yeah, I'm just not exercising anymore. The answer isn't, we'll go to the gym next, which is what a typical kind of evaluation looks like. Eat better, yeah. go to the gym. Oh, you are? Guess what? You're getting old. And that's why X, Y, Z is happening to you. And that's not, these are not explanations. Mm -hmm. These are just and what can you do in, in the eight, nine, 10 minutes you spend with your doctor? There's not really mm -hmm. a whole lot of time to figure out what the heck's going on here. Like, mm -hmm. why are you feeling this way? Why aren't you sleeping? What can we do to get you sleeping better mm -hmm. other than here, take one of these pills, which doesn't give you the proper kind of sleep anyway. Mm -hmm. And they're very addictive medication. Mm -hmm. So I heard that. That's what made me go into this journey. I had never heard of functional wellness. I never heard of functional medicine. I, you know, prevention to me meant mammogram and colonoscopy, what it means mm -hmm. to everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And the truth is you need those things. I make sure my patients get those things, but you're getting those tests, but you want to give them the best possible chance of ensuring that those tests are negative. You know, that's yeah. not the yeah. getting the test doesn't prevent it, mm. prevent bad things from happening. It prevents maybe worse things from happening in some cases. Right. But um, in any case, so that's really what made me made me realize I had to look deeper. And then I like really, you know, making 
uh, lemonade out of lemons just stumbled into the fact that, hey, I love this. I wish mm -hmm. I had seen somebody who would have made helped me because the signs mm -hmm. of what happened to me were there two to three years prior to them happening very clearly. So seeing somebody and saying, hey, you know, we, we need to we need to go in a different path. Otherwise, you're going to end up somewhere not good. Um, it's, you know, pretty it made me realize that's something that's what I wanted to do with my life. And that's, you know, take two. As far I love as that. Uh, I you love know what? And, and, and it just you you feel the way. Oh, by the way, it's so fun to watch the way that your energy turns when you when you go. It, it's just fun to watch the way that people I mean, I'm saving lives now, you know, in a different way than I thought I needed to, like when I graduated from med school, you know, in an and actual was, real, in a real way, you know what I mean? Yeah. In a real way. So how long did it take for you not to build the practice? But one of the things that I was going to, like I said, share in a moment, which is the establish the credibility, not that you're qualified, not that you've done the legwork, not that you don't have firsthand practical knowledge. How long do you think it, it took for people to think, this is a viable form of treatment, not just, oh, that's weird. I read that in a book or blah, blah, blah. by the way, which is exactly where I read about this for the first time was in I a book. I know it's all right. I mean, by Suzanne <laughs> Summers. And I'm like, you know why I was reading the book? I was reading the book because her book was cooking with all of your favorite things with no limitations. Now that has been modified since that time. Mm -hmm. But what was really interesting to me, aside from the fact that you could make um, cheese hamburgers out of cheese and hamburger and 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 more fat, it was just, but what there was a lot of science that she was having, which I never paid attention to from anybody. But all of a sudden I'm looking and I'm like, She's not just, this is not a cookbook. I remember she and mentioned like, McCormick in that book, I think. Absolutely. Right? This is this is 15 years ago. She's talking yeah. about this sort of thing, right? And yeah. and and the source is, oh my God, isn't she that like ditzy blonde from Three's Company? And she's got doctors. And again, I know that we talked about in terms of who the doctors, but what I was going to say was what was interesting to me was it kind of came out of left field. I don't quite know why it resonated, but I'm like, this is interesting. I want to find out more. But explaining that to somebody, I come off as nuts back then. How long did it take for you to be able to say to or, or have other people look at you like, oh, I get this. I get this and I want to learn more. So it's interesting. I mean, good and bad, right? So in our area, I think that, you know, we're very traditional where we live. Mm -hmm. The main line, Philadelphia in general, I think it probably dates back to just history is what I think. Also a lot of, a lot of medical centers here. So that makes it yeah. kind of tougher to think about prevention mm -hmm. because typical medical centers, um, they only make money if you're sick. So mm -hmm. it really, the incentive to keep people healthy isn't there. Mm -hmm. um, so the good thing is that you know, there's a lot of room to grow. The The challenge has been to, you know, have people understand like you did, like all of a sudden something clicks and says, wait, I got to, I can do things. I actually have the mm -hmm. power to be healthy, mm -hmm. to lower inflammation, to make sure that I don't get X, Y, Z disease. And I think that mm -hmm. people are definitely getting it. Now, Suzanne Summers is some funny stuff, but at the same time, she's bringing what she clearly did in your case and probably mm -hmm. lots of other people, like mm -hmm. some insight, hey, I can, I can do things to be healthy. And mm -hmm. like, you know, if she's relatable, we all remember watching her on the show and stuff. So yeah. I think people like that are good in that they make people, you know, kind of trigger some thoughts that they mm -hmm. might not have otherwise questioned. Hey, I could do things better. I could, mm -hmm. I could actually keep myself from getting mm -hmm. sick, which is something people just mm -hmm. don't realize. I don't go to the doctor unless I'm sick. You should go to the doctor because you want to stay healthy. Right now, mm -hmm. no, that's not been our convention, but that's becoming right. more and more, you know, mm -hmm. uh, people are realizing that, you know, you don't just go to the mechanic, you know, you go, you go there for prevention to make sure mm -hmm. your car is good and you call people to make sure your HVAC works and all kinds of other things. Mm -hmm. It's just the human body for whatever reason, we're not doing anything to be really preventative. Mm -hmm. And what we call prevention isn't really actually true prevention. So mm -hmm. I love that she's spreading the word and there's a lot of people out there. And for that matter, Dr. Axe and like, mm -hmm. all these people on the internet, Mm -hmm. Um, so I mean, longevity is now like a huge buzzword. I named mm -hmm. my practice in 2016, mm -hmm. um, anti-aging and longevity. And so I feel like, uh, I'm really excited that, you know, people are realizing that there's a whole science to how you mm -hmm. keep people healthy, how you battle mm -hmm. aging, 
Okay, how you make sure people are aging in a healthy way, you know, how to make sure that they stay vital and have vigor and um, have energy and all of those things actually translate to if you're not having those things, those are all red flags that you have some inflammation that needs to be dealt with because you should be waking up feeling good. You should be able to sleep. You should be able to, you know, do a lot of the things that we're taking medications, this, you know, these days, like in traditional medicine to to, to dull and dumb it down. And one of the things I think about is this. Look, one aside from the fact that I'm biased and I think your information is invaluable and I'm a, a very satisfied client, the other thing is it, it ties to that sense of real authenticity for me. Look, we talk about being your most authentic, true self. It is really hard for me I feel like I can do it, but it is not at a level of 100%, and it's not optimization. When I am feeling either fat, tired, lazy, uh, overstimulated, understimulated, and you have to speak to somebody about authenticity. You know what I mean? Right. It, it, like being authentic in your true self. And in my mind, I'm thinking things like, oh, God. I feel fat in the shirt or, oh my God, I haven't ran in two weeks. And oh my, and, and my thing I think about is I think one of the bigger hurdles that goes through and I'll, and I'll come back to myself in a moment, but I was going to say is people actually understanding that this matters now, as opposed to when they are in the ER or, you know what I mean, at their semi-annual, annual, whatever the healthcare allows appointment, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's like, how have you, I've, you've done some great things content wise, not just on your website, but on not just social media, but television and things like that. I love one of your fun hacks, which is eat this, not that, which you've done. I saw that first in Men's Health magazine from the Office of Men's Health. And then I'm watching yours. Talk to me about how doable this can be, whether it's intermittent fasting or the choices or whatever. If you have an example or two of something that they could take away and be like, oh, that's all she's saying? Oh, this is great. Okay. I'll give it a try. Some things that you've experienced that you feel good about. I mean, we use the word biohacking, which actually I think oh, yeah. 17 or 18 that it went into, oh, sorry, 2017 or 18 that David mm -hmm. asked put that into the Merriam-Webster dictionary. And it's mm -hmm. simply something that a lot of us are doing, most of us are doing every mm -hmm. day and we don't even realize it, right? So it's right. the art of tweaking your own biology so that you're perfecting or improving things, right? Whether you're trying to improve your sleep by fixing your sleep hygiene, mm -hmm. um, whether you're... Um, trying to reduce inflammation by using like, you know, the cryo or infrared cryo or infrared sauna. Um, those are like examples of biohacks, taking supplements, tweaking your nutrition. Like for example, people are like, I went keto or I went vegetarian or vegan, or I went plant-based in order to blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um, that's all examples of biohacking. I think intermittent f fasting is actually, it's, it's very interesting to me. I mean, on the one end of the biohacking, like when you look at some of these Silicon Valley guys, it's like transfusing mm -hmm. teenage like blood. There was a company that was doing that that's been on hold with the FDA. I think a couple of years ago, they were like, okay, you need to just stop right now. <laughs> <laughs> but the truth is like, what, so what are they talking about there? Cause it sounds kind of crazy, right? What they're yeah. trying to say is like, we want to put like young elements into mm -hmm. your body, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you can do that with intermittent fasting, maybe not the 16, eight, but if you're intermittently fasting, like once a month for two days or mm -hmm. you know, every couple of months for three days, what happens when you stop constantly infusing glucose into your system is your body is the chance to do other things that it cannot do when you're constantly feeding it. Right. And it does things like remove this, these senescent cells, senescent means aging. So what it does is your body will literally do this thing called autophagy, Greek word for mm -hmm. like basically auto, like, you know, killing cells. So it kills mm -hmm. cells that are old, that are not working properly, that need to be removed from the circulation, which then generates new cells to grow. So you're basically anti-aging just by doing things like doing a two-day fast. Now, not right for everybody, obviously, if you're diabetic mm -hmm. or your blood sugar drops, you need to be a little bit careful about that. 
um, and not, you know, not everything is good in every case. For example, like some women don't do great with intermittent fasting because it disrupts their hormones. Some do, mm -hmm. some do very well. So it's one of these things like medicine is a practice. You know, we, 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 we look to see what works for certain mm. people. I, I love that choice of words. Uh, oh, God, I didn't mean to interrupt. I love that choice of words. Medicine is a practice. Um, I love that. I do. Hey, so you just brought up a couple of things. Not everything works for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. You brought up a couple of like, like, say, like, not warning signs, but like here, for for example, that I remember when they were using terms like blood doping um, before biohacking, which then made it sound ominous and problematic right. athletes were were blood doping so they could run faster jump higher win gold medals in the olympics whatever um and so it was looked at as ominous and scary and weird biohacking sounds great but it still sounds a little bit impractical sorry you go then through the steps of what's happening for something as simplistic as intermittent and fasting so Obviously, you said medicine is a practice before somebody does something like that. Of course, check with their with their expert. Um, mm -hmm. But for the most count, would you consider that something that is doable for most people? Absolutely. If you're taking a supplement, guess what? You're biohacking. If you've ever changed your diet, you you're biohacking. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've switched mm -hmm. over so that the high intensity exercise is better mm -hmm. for you, you're biohacking. So at a very mm -hmm. basic level, changing your diet, your exercise, adding meditation, that's another mm -hmm. biohack. Doing mm -hmm. deep breathing, you know, and then those are kind of, a, we have to kind of get to level one of that longevity pyramid. And then we talk about smart supplementation. Mm -hmm. Then as you get higher up, you start mm -hmm. talking about you know, heavy hitters in anti-aging medicine like metformin and, and mm -hmm. resveratrol, tides. Um, it, there's all this research being done out there and all these really interesting things that we can do with patients to really, you know, slow down that process of aging at the cell because that is just absolutely not being done in medicine right now. So. And and so, do you, right. So do you still feel like you got either get resistance or from either your current patients or from the mainstream or whatever the case looked at as, oh, that's weird. And by weird, that could be dangerous. And so I'm just going to stay with my status quo. Do you still get resistance from that? So I think a lot of the people who come in and see me, I would say for the most part, since it's a mm -hmm. completely like um, uh, word of mouth practice to be on uh, right. for the most part until more recently, mm -hmm. I think. Um, I think people come in, they understand for the most part. Mm -hmm. I know that they understand if they end up, you know, continuing, right? Because some mm -hmm. people are not really sure what it is, but most people who come in, they're like, they're, they're saying the mm -hmm. words that I will, you know, as they're saying them, I'm nodding because, you know, they clearly understand the importance yeah. of, of, of being preventative. Mm -hmm. um, however, I think that, you know, there's, I mean, I think, there's so much on the internet these days. It's hard to mm -hmm. like, especially with COVID. I think COVID has been in a lot of ways really good for people because I think, as you mentioned earlier, the time is now. Not when the kids go to college, not mm -hmm. when, you know, whatever. There's all these excuses we have for mm -hmm. why we don't want to do things because there's some work to be done. Change mm -hmm. isn't easy, right? Change isn't easy, but, you know, changing how you're eating and changing how you're exercising, you know, starting certain things you're really resistant to doing. I have so many patients who are super successful who don't want to do that, like deep breathing. And we're talking about two minutes twice a day. Mm -hmm. And it's so hard. And at some level, I get that. There's some inertia about doing certain things, um, you know, because maybe you just don't understand that it's important or maybe for whatever reason. Like, I'll go back to ER. Part of what drew me to it is that I am yeah. a I'm a cortisol junkie. It, it okay. took me years. I don't think I realized it till a few years ago. And I what said, does that mean? What does I that think, mean? I'm a cortisol no, junkie. I was like, you know, like I could be up all night, like working with patients. <laughs> it's so fun. I mean, these are things that came out of my mouth. And then like years later, I'm like, oh, talk about pro aging, you know, right. being up all night, not right. sleeping and changing mm -hmm. circadian rhythms that mm -hmm. your hormones are all mm -hmm. whacked out. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, yeah, cortisol. I mean, the thing is that a lot of times people when they're, you know, prone to diabetes, they tend to crave sugars. 
So I actually ask people what they crave because the ones that crave the sugar the most, they probably have the, we have the biggest concern of them developing diabetes. Mm -hmm. So for people who crave, you know, cortisol and excitement and stuff like that, like that's like, that's the thing that is my challenge personally mm -hmm. in my own health. So okay. I have to do things to basically keep that really inflammatory hormone down. So mm -hmm. we all kind of resist certain things. I, I mm -hmm. would say that's not the hardest for me to, to pick up. But now before I get out of my car, I make mm -hmm. myself do some deep breathing. I also feel like if I'm getting upset about something, I do some deep breathing, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I mean, there's studies that show, you know, lowered blood pressure, lowered cortisol, all kinds of mm -hmm. positive changes mm -hmm. from that specific biohack of just doing some deep breathing a couple times a day. So deep breathing is biohacking. Why do you think people resist it? Why do you think something as simple as you described, and by the way, present company included, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. Like for myself, I know the benefits of meditation. I work with psychologists. I work with you. And every day it's, uh, am I going to do this? And I, and I do it more than I did. So this is not, I don't need to beat myself up, but I can absolutely with complete candor feel like that's some sort of a monumental uh, to do that could wait. So that, Why do you think so there's the resistance to such basic, simple things? I mean, I think that's a pretty complicated question, to be honest with you. Um, Sorry. And that's, <laughs> yeah, I think that's, it's a great question. So mm -hmm. here's the thing. I've also done a lot of reading because just because I, I feel that it's our, it's our, it's part of my practice and how we help mm -hmm. people to help us figure out what the impediments of doing the things that we need to that are going to be good for us. Love Why do some people go to bed at two in the morning? They, they're, they're like, I know that's not good. We mm -hmm. all know what we should be doing all day long. Mm -hmm. I hear from patients. I know I shouldn't be doing that mm -hmm. or I should be doing this. I know what I should be doing too, but then why don't we always do it, right? Mm -hmm. So the question is, right. in a lot of cases, there's some there's some like hang up or something that's holding one mm -hmm. back from just, just do it, you mm -hmm. know? And it's not it's not the answer to tell someone be like, just do it, because mm -hmm. if we just did all the things that we know we should do, everyone would be doing much mm -hmm. much better, right? Mm -hmm. yep. um, so you know, in my in my practice, we also like have a health coach that works with patients to try to figure out, mm -hmm. you know, what are like what may be keeping us from being the best versions of ourselves? I actually mm -hmm. don't love the health coach word. I actually really like the human potential coach because that's really, we're trying to be our, our best. Right. I gotcha. I gotcha. Health, uh, I mean, I know that like it's everywhere, but mm -hmm. you know, I have patients who are kind of at a, at a higher level where they're more evolved and you know, they want to be up here, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, <laughs> the human potential coach kind of sounds like a better word for me, but, um, but yeah, we have people like, you know, who literally work with our patients to try mm -hmm. to see what we can do so that certain things become top of mind for them. Just like we know we have to be badass about our businesses mm -hmm. and like pay our bills mm -hmm. on time. And, and mm -hmm. I have patients who run around with their kids who like, you know, their kids are being recruited for, you know, at, at the highest level for sports and they're doing all this work, then mm -hmm. why not do some of these other things that seem you know, easier. And why do we mm -hmm. push out certain things that we shouldn't be? So there, mm -hmm. there's, there's a, and, and when the patient comes to that conclusion themselves or is brought to that conclusion, mm -hmm. sometimes like motivational interviewing, that's the most powerful of all, because anybody telling, it's like somebody tells me, go do this. Okay, great. Whatever, you know, or I should do that, but it doesn't mm -hmm. really affect change. Mm -hmm. When you come to the conclusion, you're like, I really need to be doing this mm -hmm. and I'm going to do this now we start to see some changes in behavior. And that's not like a click or everything mm -hmm. changes. It's, it's a process that's slower, it's baby steps, it's you know bringing that behavior change mm -hmm. into your everyday life for X period of time, weeks, and then all of a sudden it can become mm -hmm. something that is what your lifestyle is. A habit, so I, uh, like a legit habit at that point, right? right? right. You, you, you just said the, the choice of terminology for Oh my God, I need it for a third time. Not health coach, but human potential. Coach. I think that is great. And I think it's so much better defined. So why am I talking to, the, why am I talking to the health coach? And then, 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 then. but you right. know, what human potential? You know what I mean? It's like, Christ, I've been stagnant for this. I'm, I'm trying to 
personally, uh, and I'll take trying out of it, I have signed up for to run the third attempt at a marathon that stopped me cold twice. So, well, why don't you talk to the health co- uh, And then she's going to tell me all the things I don't want to do. Or even worse, they'll say something like, oh, all you have to do is, and then I'm like, ew, whatever is you follow up with, I'm going to hate. But I love that you just said that because it's like, oh, I don't want to get stopped by the school bus at mile 21 at a race where all my friends are finishing. All, all, all but me and somewhat I define old people sitting on a school bus and they're probably all younger than me. And I'm like, uh, so I'm like, oh, I want, I want higher potential. I don't want to yeah. keep feeling like, okay, I hate the oh, way I look in that picture. That's great. I think. There are mar- It's not caught up, caught up. Like it's not, um, basically my office isn't really feeling the human potential term, but I think I might mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. start using it more often. Cause I, I love it. Cause I think the health coach, it's like, mm-hmm. Raw, raw. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, I, I think that, I think that it's, um, I don't know, it seems very popular to have health coaches mm-hmm. these days, but yeah. I think really what we want is to, for people to be at their best. And that's different. I also think a lot of people are already doing, you know, the kinds of things that they need to, to be at like, you know, 80, 85% of, you mm-hmm. know, I don't see your typical, typical patients who are just like, I go to McDonald's and mm-hmm. I smoke. Like, I don't tell people to stop smoking <laughs> because they don't smoke. They wouldn't be there if they did. You right, know? right. So, you know, we're talking about people who are already pretty evolved and taking mm-hmm. them to the next level. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I really like that. Which marathon are you thinking of running? It's not the one in Big November. Big Sur. In it's Big Sur in April. Uh, oh, the one in Philadelphia is late November. I'm running that half marathon. Uh, oh, just yeah, to get yeah. Back. November 20th, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll do the half. I'm not doing the full. But the one that I'm talking about is it's the last Sunday in April. And it's in Big Sur, California. And to me, wow. it is, it's, it, how do I define it? It's like running a roller coaster. It, it's like if you went to Six Flags and you saw the ride, you'd be like, okay, yeah. now you're going to run that. And it's, it's all pretty hilly, huh? And And by pretty hilly, I'm going to say, think of Space Mountain and you're just doing this for oh, 26 wow. miles. And it's the only one. But here's the thing. I also know too, that weight is involved and energy is involved and sleep is involved. And it's not mm-hmm. just how many miles did you run this week? Although obviously that matters. And what is the physical conditioning? So I'm going to go back to one more time, that sense of suggestions that people could be made, not aware of the information. Like you said, it's freaking everywhere. You can't get out of the way of it, which is good news. But it's right. why would you choose to follow it as opposed to act like I'll get to it next week, next month, next April when this really matters? Um, right. I'll really, I'll laser focus. So I feel like for myself and for other people, if we want to be at our best, if we want to be able to speak best, you you talk about terms. I've literally rebranded um the company Duffin Media as we optimize communication so that you will, so that people don't have to guess or wonder. And to me, optimization of anything, certainly from a business side, a voice side, is something a lot of people would want. (laughs) And so this is clearly something, not just that people, me included, should want, it's desperately need. And so now it's, it's what's the wake up call, so to speak. So it doesn't, you're not needing to come off like, eh, yeah, 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 yeah. and then people are like, oh, okay, I'm just going to go smoke and eat at McDonald's um, <laughs> until I see you again in the ER. What, what do you think could right. be the hack? What is the hack, so to speak, that would get people to be like, it's achievable, desirable, and it's necessary. What's I mean, a lot of times we see people because like something yeah. has happened to a family member or to a friend. Mm-hmm. I mean, really more and more, I there can say people I've heard, they're like, mm-hmm. my friend just dropped dead at 50 and he was healthy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I look at pictures, just I, mm-hmm. I don't think really, it's funny what we think healthy is. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't think no. is. I can see people, they come into a room, I'm like, well, they have metabolic syndrome based on, mm-hmm. you know. YZ. You can just kind of as they're see. arriving to the chair, you're like, okay, I got this. And you're right. And that's the scary. Yeah. And I can predict reliably a lot of times how their labs are going to be off too, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I think that, you know, you really shouldn't wait for somebody around you to basically drop Love. that, right? Love. You should just, 
just, I mean, basic, basic understanding mm -hmm. of if you don't take care of this one mm -hmm. body that you were given, mm -hmm. you will not be served well for it. And I have people mm -hmm. come in, they're like, hey, I'm uh, 65 and I feel really good, but what do I need to do for the next, you know, 20, 30, 40 years mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm, you know, golfing and playing mm -hmm. tennis and traveling the world and enjoying all this mm -hmm. You know everything that I've you know worked for that I finally now have time to stop and enjoy. Mm -hmm. I want to be around and be able to do it. For, you know, at my at my best. You know, to the uh -huh. fullest. So I think that you know we just really have to, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, think about what wellness is. Mm -hmm. Wellness is the active mm -hmm. pursuit of staying healthy. It's not just something that just passively happens mm -hmm. to you. I'm going to live my life, eat stuff, sometimes exercise, not sleep great, drink you know, and I'm just going to be at my best health, you know, mm -hmm. so anything that you do to see with the financial plan, I have tons of financial, you know, wealth mm -hmm. advisors, we mm -hmm. tell all their patients, they're like, if you're, you know, health is wealth. If, if you're not healthy, you're not around mm -hmm. to enjoy this money. You're not able to make great decisions. You're not mm -hmm. able to work to your fullest. It's like what you said, optimizing. Mm -hmm. So it's all about optimizing your health, which then allows you to optimize other areas of your body. Correct. The rest of your life, which I think is incredible. Yeah. Hey, Doug, I love all of this. I the last question I'd ask for the moment, which is this: um, You've got a really cool family, and what would what would what's the message that as a and especially with your kids, where it's it's like you don't want to come off like, oh well, mom said I have to, <laughs> or even worse, sorry, no pun intended, doctor, mom said I have to. Blah, blah. How how do you convey the message? So that we're not waiting until 50 or 60 like me to be like, oh, hey, um, would you mind fixing the last five decades? What like when you're speaking to your kids, what's the message? How do you how do you convey the message so that they are feeling galvanized? I've seen you on a local trail in Philadelphia. Seen you, it's like health is obviously a huge factor for you and your family. How do you how do you convey the message? Um, you know, that's a good question. So same mm -hmm. thing, right? When you talk to people and just tell them to do things, it's certainly mm -hmm. not as effective as when they're seeing people do things or mm -hmm. experiencing it themselves. My oldest son is 13 now. Right. I remember yep. a few years ago, he mm -hmm. was, this is, I think he was like eight or something. And I remember being kind of shocked by it. Mm -hmm. Here I am helping my patients, you know, you know, eat clean and all these things. Mm -hmm. I try not to keep junk mm -hmm. in the house. Well, you got to keep a little bit for these kids because, then I've also heard of kids who like had nothing and then they go kind of crazy when they mm -hmm. are close to it. And then in their mm -hmm. minds, the reward is always like sugar. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, moderation. Right. But I remember mm -hmm. one time there were like cookies and he didn't realize it and he saw them and he was like, Oh, chocolate chip cookies. And the eyes got really big. And I looked at him and I said, Oh my, in my own head, I said, I, I think this kid is a sugar addiction. And I was like, kind of shocked by it. I'm like, mm -hmm. how does my kid? But literally the eyes got like, you know, and uh, <laughs> think about sugar addiction. Sugar is eight times more addictive than uh -huh. cocaine, you know, and like studies they've done on, on mice. Say that one more time. Sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. Mm hmm. I asked you to repeat that because I can feel that. Uh, I, 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 I mean it. I, I, I'm like, what the hell has happened with me lately? But that's it's it's in my head, and I'll, we're going to go back. Kids, it's like how do you get right with how scary that is, with the sense that you can do something. Now you're talking to your kids, right? You see this image, and they're like, <gasps> I know, right? So it's all ha Halloween night, for instance. Halloween night, right? Now. Yeah, then, then right? Now, now, like now, all three of my, the youngest, not so much, he's seven, but the other two, like mm -hmm. they will say things like, "This is too sugary," or they'll take two bites of something. And then not have any more. Mm -hmm. So things have changed over the years. And they've also like said to me, like, mom, no matter what kind of restaurant we go to, you get a salad. And I'm like, yep. So I think just modeling a lot of this behavior mm -hmm. to the kids. But as far as the sugar issue, it's it's complicated, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't sleep enough, if you're not getting enough protein in your diet, if mm -hmm. you are stressed about things, mm -hmm. if you know, it's it's there's so many different reasons you could have, mm -hmm. you know, like this kind of sugar interest, mm -hmm. but, but I think with the kids just, and anyone around you just trying to model that behavior and kind of keeping it top of mind, you know, John, I'm lucky. I talk to patients all day long about what mm -hmm. we need to do with them. So it's mm -hmm. always going to be top of my mind. I got gotcha, you, right. Easy. You know, I was an engineer and then I had to, you know, 
So it, I, it's always top of my mind. What should I be doing? What am I not doing? How do I do this better? You know, but with my 13 year old now, he tracks his macros and he is tracking his exercise, you know. Nice. I know you'll see him on the school cover trail because he runs. Around oh, Philly. right. Uh, well, I won't for long. That's the problem is they all run right <laughs> past me. And so I just see them and wave. And <laughs> yeah, I saw you that time. <laughs> exactly. So you'll see Well, you and you'll have to see me more. And that's on me, not on you. Um, hey, we're going to get you about, optimized for that uh, for that marathon. In I have to have to. Okay. So we now know what our future conversations. But folks, I went. Dr. Seema Bonnie is such a worth a follow a visit a call a consultation what are the best ways i will have your social media links but what's the best way for somebody to find you um our main office is in Bryn Mawr. um we're mm -hmm. wellness-doctors plural.com mm -hmm. so and social media it's at sema bonnie md mm -hmm. so we put out a lot of fun biohacks and mm -hmm. facts and there's studies that come out every day about mm -hmm. sleeping and visceral fat mm -hmm. and all kinds of stuff that's really interesting and i think that you know a lot of times you read these things and you say oh wow longevity i can live x number of years longer if i do ten thousand steps a day i can do ten thousand steps mm -hmm. a day so little things that can be really motivating to help you just live a better life Folks, I will make, well, you, you'll you already know by being here, which is that I want to keep pretending this is live, live, but is it all the links are there. Your website link is there. Your social media links are there. Dr. Seema Bonnie, I thank you so much for showing up for me today. I'm really grateful to you for the professionalism, for the expertise and helping a bunch of other people be more authentic. Thanks for showing up for me. Thanks, John, for having me. And I'll see you on the Skulker River Trail. Sounds like a plan, folks. And you've just heard another episode of Your Message Received. We are thrilled that you keep showing up so that we can help you find your best, most true, authentic voice so that you can get what you want, find what you need, and optimize results so that you'll do whatever the hell you want. You'll just do it better. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's John Duffin from Duffin Media. Have a great day, and we will talk soon. Be well. Bye. And now, making its way across the finish line, your message received has been a production of Duffin Media.